What's up, boys and girls? Welcome to the BFF's YouTube channel. Make sure you guys tap the bell, subscribe, like yes. the video, and comment down below. All right, Raising Canes, we have it here in the office. I'm in Chicago, chowing down on it, the best. This was actually here for half an hour, and it still is awesome. Thanksgiving's right around the corner, and I already know what I'm bringing to the Friendsgiving feast this year. Raising Cane's delicious, tailgates full of hot chicken fingers, cane sauce, Texas Coast, jugs of sweet tea, always a hit with my friends. Cane's has covered for all the fixings. My parents are actually coming to Miami for Thanksgiving, so we may just do this for our real Thanksgiving. Their mobile app makes ordering for a crowd quick, convenient, so I'm not wasting any time this holiday season waiting in line. Thankful for a lot of things this year, but Raising Cane's chicken fingers are top of my list. Satisfy your Canes fix today. There's no other option. Come for the chicken fingers. Stay for the sauce. Order online at RaisingCanes.com. BFFs, we have Matt Reif coming on, special guest, later in the show. Um, we have no Josh. I guess he... He's all he sick. Passed out, was spinning, a.k.a. was hungover. So the dude mm -hmm. missed the show because hungover. Give um, him the benefit of the doubt. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, too, but if it was a hangover, man, well, you guys said he went out. the hangover. You said he went out hard last night, right? Well, he had the um, the CFDAs. I don't think yeah. I'm saying that right, but he had a show last yeah. night. Yeah, right. So he, I would definitely say hungover. Um, let's get into the headlines. Keith Lee shakes up Atlanta restaurant scene. I was reading this when you guys sat down. I don't get it. Keith Lee is a food, food reviewer with almost 15 million followers on TikTok who gives honest reviews on restaurants, food, customer service. He's mindful of his influence, even when giving a negative review, is very positive. Um, okay. Well, Keith Lee had some great experience in Atlanta, like helping a woman who took over her late father's restaurant give a tip matching the owner's sales for the day. Those experiences were overshadowed on the internet by Keith Lee's family being turned down or told they have over an hour wait by multiple restaurants only to tell Keith Lee he could eat immediately. Oh. So he was mad that, he, like, they were just giving him, like, special treatment? Is that what's yeah. going what on? I'm getting so he from sends it? his family in to go get the stuff because he doesn't want to be influenced by the fact that it's him getting it. Yeah, they want. And then he'd come in and be like, well, now I want to give you service. And he'd refuse the service, being like, if you weren't going to give it to a regular person, don't give it to me. Like, kind of like if you did a pizza review and, like, they changed the whole thing and make sure the pizza is extra good for you. Well, no, that, that doesn't. It sounds like he's just got to skip the line. It has nothing to do with the food, right? Yeah. They're like, but we he, don't have to. We can't do it. We can't do it. We can't accommodate it. But then they see it's him and they're like, actually, yeah, we can't. No shit. Of course, yeah, if I walk into like a pizza that, place and there's a two hour wait and I show up, I would expect the pizza place, no offense to everyone else, to accommodate me since I'm there to do a pizza thing. Like, I wouldn't. I, what am I missing? There's an hour late. There's an hour wait for anybody who shows up. This has nothing to do with skin color, race, nothing. It's just you go to a restaurant, there's an hour wait. This influencer, Keith Lee, who's famous, shows up in the restaurant, makes accommodations. No different than, let's say, um, you know, Tom Brady showed up at a restaurant. You're not like, hey, Tom, you got to wait two hours. Oh, my God, it's Tom Brady. Uh, he's cutting the line. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, he, yeah. Refu he refuses. He's like, like, fuck this line. guy. So Keith refused it, though, yes? Yes. It happened okay. multiple times, but he's like, yeah, I won't. He's like, I won't take preference. So why is this the number one story on BFFs right now? It's a massive st a story because the, now the place, one of the places that he did that made like a video being like, we don't know Keith Lee is, we don't care. And now no one goes there. It's like the place is empty. Oh, wow. Yeah. Don't want to ruin a business. Well, they had to know who Keith Lee was. Why were they letting Keith Lee skip the line? Yeah. Yeah. Is there stuff I should know about this? Uh, first of all, I, I think Keith, Keith Lee is a little presumptuous to be like, I'm, I, I refuse service because you were going to accommodate me. Of course they are. You're a food reviewer. Yeah, but I think he want, he sends his family in so that it's like an honest review and they're not making his food extra special so that he, he gives a better review. It's so like then an undercover why do, customer. So undercover why doesn't his boss. family just wait in line an hour? Yeah, I think that's what he's saying. He wants them to. He doesn't like that they put him on a pedestal. Yeah, but why are you showing show up? Don't problem. show up. Don't show up early. Wait. That one was. I think they were like, we don't have time, so we went somewhere else. Then they found out it was him that was waiting. Big. Like, well, no, now we can let you in. No mm -hmm. shit. Yeah. What am I missing here? <laughs> I'm, I'm you're, you're, you're understanding. Kind of it. He just refuses. He refuses. And that. people are like, go, yeah. go. Yeah. 
Is there video like this is stupid to me? Yeah, I can't believe this is the biggest. Ne- Honestly, have we hired have you, that have girl you, yet? Have you never heard of him before? <laughs> no, I have I know, I know who he is. I've definitely seen his videos. I like him a lot. I just, I don't understand what the big deal is. Why is he so upset that he gets to cut the line? Currently, we are at the real milk and honey. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one through 10. As you can see, I don't have any bags in my hands. My family went in and they told them they were closed early for deep cleaning. Yet the door is wide open and it's people still going in and grabbing their orders. Also, the people who relayed this message, my family said were really nice. It's just the rules. Don't call this restaurant trying to get nobody fired. Ain't nobody do nothing. This is just the rules they had. For the record, afterwards, I did walk in and they did recognize me. And they attended the services, but I respectfully declined. I'm a normal person. I pay for my food like everybody else. Respectfully, if you're not going to do it then, don't do it now. God bless you. Yeah, we're just trying to get some food. But I am going to make this very clear. I do not support, condone, or agree tearing down these businesses while we personally may not have the best customer service experience it does not mean you will have the same experience all right so he's pissed that his family was turned away and then he walks in and he gets it Mm -hmm. it's just a family thing right but again he did say a little bit other people were getting it i i i can give a little more context if you want so he also includes the customer service experience that his family typically goes through. Like, oh, these people were super nice and the food's nice. So even if he doesn't always like the food, he might say the restaurant was really great. Like the people there were awesome. People are now mad because that like back to back, his Atlanta reviews were fairly negative. And he has so much influence that all these negative places, all, all the places that he reviewed negatively are now getting shit on receiving death threats, whatever it may be. And his whole point is like, well, I'm going to review it honestly for the experience that we had. You can't ask me to review your your restaurant and then get mad because you don't like the review. And then on top of that, Cardi B kind of added like basically the Atlanta restaurant scene. It's like you can't get food unless you're famous. Cardi B went on on live and was like, I've had similar experience. Like I've tried to get food somewhere and no place will serve me until I say it's Cardi B. So everyone's like, why is it so hard to get food? In Atlanta. Got to feed Atlanta. Who cares? <laughs> Thank Honestly, you, this, this story Thank is you. fucking stupid. Thank you. Who, I, Devin, Austin, come Seems on. Seems like they need more restaurants in Atlanta. Come yeah. On. Yeah. This I is, guess it was a big story, but I think that's a story. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I, I guess I'm in the food review business. Yeah. But yeah. this does nothing. Like, I, I, what what he made is fine. The only thing, I again, I take the food. You're a food reviewer. If you're reviewing the food, you want to let people know if it's good, eat the food. Whatever. That, that story doesn't eat do up. much for me. Yeah. Vonnie Gregg claps back at Olivia Richards. Josh, Gabby, Duda, Rupert, Anthony Reeves, Josh's sister, Olivia, dressed up as Mystery Incorporated from Scooby-Doo Halloween. Olivia posted a video of her and Anthony as Shaggy and Velma with the caption, Scrawny White Boy, referring to Vonnie Gregg calling Anthony a scrawny white boy. Boy in Maddie Monroe's YouTube video, fans are quick to point out that Ivani and Anthony once dressed as Shaggy and Velma for Halloween too. Um, Olivia's TikTok. I, I do we have the side by side one? Yeah, Paul Pers. And then that, this is the original. That was Josh's sister. Yes. Yeah, and then this was the original one from last year. Avani clapped back at po- by posting text. I was a su- suggestive audio, like a video with song lyrics. If you wondered if I hate you, fuck you, from Sizz's song and an audio that says, jealous, you don't even exist to me. Okay. Olivia went on live. Olivia is Josh's, Josh's sister. sister and said she doesn't want to be Avani. It was a group costume, and she took the opportunity with the costumes that they had to make a video. Well... Well, I was confused. So I, I asked Josh, I was like, are they together? Like, are your sister and Anthony a thing? And he was like, no, absolutely not. So I was like, why did she make the video? I guess it was just like a little, fuck you. Yeah. Listen, we're Team Richards here. Olivia says she doesn't want to be Ivania's group costume. She took the opportunity with the costumes that they had to make a video. Is it a Josh's sister like a person? <laughs> Yeah, she lives, she breathes. <laughs> yeah, she oh, she's in all, she makes a bunch of content too. So I think she, like Josh is so team Anthony and Olivia's a ride or die for her brother and Anthony. And after Avani made that video saying, fuck you, scrawny white boy, she was like, I'm going to make this because fuck you. Gotcha. 
That's the way I see it. She's got her brother's back. <laughs> yeah, and Anthony's. So I don't think she wants to be Ivani. Everyone was like, you're jealous of Ivani. You want to be her. And I think she was just like standing up for Anthony. Yeah, interesting. I mean, you obviously bring yourself into the mix because I kind of had the same vibes you did, Brie. Like, are they together? Yeah. Or yeah. Like, she, Olivia would seemingly, yeah, friends with John, uh, with, with Josh and um, Reeves, Anthony Reeves. Yeah. 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 She's picking a fight, though, with Ivani. Yeah. yeah. Very clearly. Yeah. Um, Taylor Swift's Girl Squad is back. Reminiscent of her original 1989 er uh, era, Taylor Swift is spotted with New Girl Squad. She went to dinner with Selena, Brittany Gomez, Gigi Hadid, Sophie Turner. Yeah, I saw this. This is like the Rat Pack for women. She's hand in hand with uh, yeah. with Brittany Mahomes. And it's locked fingers. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's different. They're really There's close. There's a chance I'd pass out if I just happened to be like <laughs> walking in the street. Just be like, oh. Imagine that. I would be so intimidated that crowd coming towards you. I would just crawl and fall over. Yeah, I'd be right there I'm with saying. them all. I'd be standing there. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean Taylor Swift's coming out? <laughs> with <laughs> all of them? Picture. It's crazy. Yeah, that's a crazy power squad. And then it's just like Gigi Hadid is just in the back, just like casually. It's insane. It's nuts. Uh, Argentinian fans have been camping out since June for Taylor Swift. Not surprising. Um, what? June. It's November. Yeah, well, she's the queen. Uh, <laughs> Travis Kelsey what? was asked if he's in love with Taylor Swift. I was actually driving, and I went through a tunnel, and then there, the, it got right to here's what Travis Kelsey said, and then I went through a tunnel, so I didn't hear what he said. It was crazy. It was like it was in the tunnel for seven <laughs> seconds, missed the whole thing. So a I live reaction. It. Yeah, this will be a live reaction. I heard them talk about it after, and I know he said he wasn't in love, but he said it in a way they're like it's a good answer. Anyways, let's hear. It. Uh oh. The latest status is I got to see her last week. That's the latest status right there. Um, I'm gonna keep my personal relationship personal. Travis, are you expecting Taylor to be at the game? You know what? I think when I mention or everybody knows that she's at the game, the Vegas, uh, the over under on my catches kind of goes up and down. So you know, I don't want to mess with any of that stuff. So I'm just gonna keep it to myself. Oh, I, I didn't. Hear, that was whatever. That was blah. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Beast preemptively says he's not apologizing for a new video. Prior to Mr. Beast publishing one of his new videos of him building 100 wells in Africa, Mr. Beast preemptively tweeted they knew it was going to get canceled and wanted to be 100% clear he doesn't care. Naturally, Mr. Beast did attract both praise and criticism for uploading the video. Um, this is because what? When he does something positive, people say he's just doing it for views? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with Mr. Beast. Yeah, who cares? He still helped people. Yeah. Uh, similar to Matt Reif, fans are upset after a clip from Andrew Schultz's post podcast has resurfaced of Mr. Beast revealing he has to put women through the test to find out whether they're compatible or not. Mr. Beast said, although he was immediately attracted to his now girlfriend, Thea Boyson, if she didn't check his boxes pertaining what she's interested in, if she likes learning, he wouldn't be able to be with her. If she likes learning, he wouldn't be able to be with her? Yeah, she, he, he likes women who like to learn. Well, this is better than saying saying features about a, a woman, I'd suppose. Oh, but the way I read it, if she likes learning, he wouldn't be with her. No, no, he wants her to be. He wants her to learn. Yeah, I don't know. This is again, maybe you can figure out organically. I don't know the need to like have a test. That's I think the point of like getting to know somebody. But overall, if you're just trying to find out if you're compatible, I don't have like a giant problem with it. Yeah, it's kind of your your thing. I don't know. This crazy, this crazy viral plane lady. She's hanging out with all Barstool people. I got. I can't everywhere I look. She's there. Are her and Hank smashing? Let me tell. Let me let me tell you, ladies, something. The first thing I did. <laughs> I'm in Chicago. I saw Hank walk by the office. I just did this. I go, come here. I go. <laughs> why are you being such a pervert? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Wait, is, am I missing something? He's dude, being a pervert. He's he's at any chance he gets, he's trying to hit on her uh, it, okay. it literally i can't log on to <laughs> barstool without seeing the plane girl and it's like this is from six months ago i like is i i they're sitting on a couch i can't tell pft is hitting on her it's like isn't he married can, hank is at football games he posts and pictures like where did this woman come from that i can't log on to barstool she runs like the chicago office like what is going on I thought we hired her. I've seen I, her so much. Me too, Grace. I'm like, why is she suddenly, she's on stream, she's shooting baskets, she's at football games, she's 
taking pictures and it's like where what happened why is what is she's <laughs> and why on is PMT? she back how did yeah how did she just resurface and only come back in our world it's yeah, like only she's Bar- suddenly Bar- the Bar- center of the barstool universe lives. yeah it's i crazy. have no idea I'll we had a girl at bar- our live show talk about her um uh, we have uh most embarrassing stories that our fans will like tell on stage yeah and this girl's most embarrassing story was that she was dating this guy for like three years and the whole same time that they were dating he was also dating plain lady mm-hmm. wow yeah she's she's, she's everywhere yeah i think she's a holographic figure and there's a bunch of her yeah she says she never saw anything on the plane it's the pmt was like when she came back like she disappeared and then came back pft kept like hitting on her on twitter being like hey come on the guys be cool like just as like a joke and then it kept going 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 and then i guess i don't think it's a joke. To- hank may be dating her yes i think yeah. I, I think it's looking so i think maybe it got a little hairy with pft continually hitting on her when you know and then so they shifted it to hank got it i think yeah she's pretty hot yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Like she looks great. <laughs> yeah, pervert might looks take. a lot better than her plane video. She really threw it together. Yeah, because that's a different person. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, that's so what she a lot just of said think. she didn't see anything. Yeah, it, yeah, she it, just said she had a moment of weakness. Okay. Yeah, and now she's I, I, dating the Hank. fact we're talking about it is crazy. All right, hotel won't let Tana Mojo and Brooke Schofield check in? Question mark. Well, trying to check into the hotel in San Diego, Tana Mojo, Brooke uh, Schofield were met with some trouble, and the hotel won't let them check in because they gave their fake name August River to keep a anom- and avoid stalkers. The hotel said they couldn't check in because their credit card information was linked to August River, although it isn't a real person. Okay. Who cares? I've always wondered how that works, though. For celebrities and they use a fake name. Cause Zach does the fake name thing, but he they always let him in. Hmm. I think Zach's level of fame is quite a bit different than Tana and Brooke, but Yeah, me yeah. and Grace go on tour, we use fully. We use a, I give them my social. <laughs> yeah, I I never use a fake name. I'm pretty like easy to DP. find. Um streamer Neon knee three on his girlfriend cheated on him while celibate. <laughs> Oh, that sucks, wow. Man. That sucks. She was celibate? A tip of 40 there. That's tough. Damn. How do you pronounce this guy's name? 19. I think it's just, think it's just Neon. Neon. Neon is a massive streamer known for his IRL streams, which is similar to Jack Doherty's stream with Karina Kampf, where you stream real life moments of you walking around and getting into chaotic situations. Neon is dating OnlyFans creator. And Jack Doherty's OnlyFans agent, Sam Frank, who has recently been accused of cheating. Ah. Uh, that's not cheating. Wait, what's not cheating? The whole situation. Sam flew, flew a man out mean? to meet her and says they only slept in the same bed together but didn't do anything more. I just okay. feel like if you are a streamer in the Jack Doherty world of chaos situations, you're dating an OnlyFans girl in Jack Doherty's agency, that's anything goes. This is this is probably a work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't care about any of this. Uh I guess she was on Glenny's OnlyFans. Only stands, yeah. <laughs> what are we going to land on? BFF corner. Oh, that's where we landed on. <laughs> what are the BFF? Are the BFFs out of touch? The BFF TikTok comments have been flooded with people saying they're out of touch after the BFF has taken the Demello's dressing as Walmart employees and woman upset about her nine to five job. Brielle, the woman who posted the video, upset about her nine to five, said the BFFs don't know the struggle most people face in life. She was specifically upset with Bree, saying she could go create a better job for herself. Yeah, this is all my fault, apparently. All we said was it just don't complain. Dude, I don't know. I still don't think it was that crazy. No, fuck everybody's complaining. You're fucking morons. We said like, that that if you're upset about that, they're doing a promo. Get a fucking life. Like, I don't know. My fucking parents work doubles and never complained a day in their life. W- Brielle's response, this is That's the nine to five girl. All right, let's see. Let's see Brielle's nine to five girl. I'm not out of touch. And we didn't even shit on her. No, we didn't. At all. Like we're the ones that said oh, this is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just got sent the BFFs podcast about me, about Brianna Chicken Fry, like, reacting to my 9 to 5 video. Why is it basically me? Basically, she just said, suck it up, that's life. It's disappointing, but it's completely not surprising. To sit there and say, that's life, when nobody can afford doctor's appointments, people literally work from the moment the sun rises till the minute the sun sets, it's pitch black every single day. You have no idea the struggle that most people in America face. So, even Trisha Paytas sat there and said, this should not be oh, life. Trisha to sit in your little influencer tower and be able to experience more in a year paid for than the average American working will in their entire lives to just sit there and laugh and be like, haha, go create a better job for yourself, she said. Do you know how much it costs to start a business? No. Also, with how easy you're making it sound, wouldn't everyone be self-employed and there would be nobody homeless in the world if it was that fucking easy? This, girl, all right, this girl's fucking crazy. Dude, Sorry, and, Brielle, uh, you dude, crazy. She's this crazy. Is fucking insane that she sat there. She sit, everyone in that comment section, too, is sitting there like, we sat there and made fun of working people, made fu fun it's of crazy. people with nine to five jobs. All we said is it's crazy to get on fucking social media and... Like shit on us for it. It's not our that. fault that this yeah. is our fucking job. Somebody show Homegirl the Barstool documentary. Fucking girl it's sleeping. The I'm driving the fucking Astro van around 48 hour papers, clean shit out of racks. There was a lot of Dave stands in the comments going after these people, being like, you don't know what grinding is. <laughs> yeah, you don't fucking know shit, Homegirl. That girl's crazy. Don't let that girl get to you. That girl's cra crazy. Do you know how much it costs to start a business? What are you talking about? I Dude, I never said start a fucking business. I we said, were just Why saying to get us? mad at Charlie. We got lucky. I Correct. said, yeah. She was I more mad about the nine to five thing than the Charlie thing. Those are like two, but those two got lifted together. Working is, sucks. Nine to no five shit. fucking yeah. sucks. No, no one was on, not on her side with that. We were saying, yeah, that unfortunately is just fucking life. We're not the president. She has no idea the days we spent flipping patties. Dude, and everyone's like, have you ever had a job? I'm like, mm, I've had so many fucking jobs, dude. About a grind. Crazy. Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. I saw this was cool to see. I uh Elon has no clue who I am, but they were so Elon was on the Rogan podcast and they're just eating pizza, talking portnoy. Kind of got my ego going. It's kind of <laughs> awesome. This looks awesome. That's legit. Oh, that's I mean, I'm no gross. date porn. I know people were mm -hmm. saying it was like a pizza analyst. ASMR I'm not gonna rate shit. it. It's excellent. This point I really gets into pizza. Oh man. <laughs> oh, man. That's the point. You get the point. I was sent to me. They are eating. But yeah, uh, listen, I, I, I'm i not above having my ego stroked. I like no, that. No, that's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is this, I was on the Adam Friedland show. I don't feel like that's no. big. I saw I a clip of. of this. It was hilarious. I, what the fuck? I haven't seen it. Crazy. I haven't watched it yet. So it's an interesting. Heavily edited. It was, I think we filmed for two and a half hours. It came up being 25 minutes. It's an interesting right. dynamic because, like, he's playing, like, a role character, and I'm brick by brick, not shtick by shtick. So, like, I was just me. I, I don't. I haven't seen the clip, so I guess we can watch it. Because they're hilarious. I thought you got set up <laughs> by the way the clips go. Yeah, I could see it coming across that way. You know, I'm from Boston. I didn't know that. Yeah. Where? Um, Southie. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like a selfie guy. That wasn't that funny. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Your people laugh. Well, can I tell so. you about my upbringing? <laughs> sure. No one wanted me. I was a fucking orphan. Everyone said I was shit. I had shit for brains. Retarded. <laughs> my friends were all common street toughs, and they were in a gang. Actually, the Boondock Saints. My like friends. The movie, yeah. Not like the movie. I was wanted to make an honest living, so I got a job as a janitor. So at we're Harvard. gonna do a movie. We're gonna go at down Harvard. different Boston. What, like what movies. movies are you talking okay. about? I get. I, I, what's next? And then I went home and I smoked weed with my teddy bear named Ted. Uh, did that go well? I, like, I, no, you had that fucking look on your face. Well, if this was no, in my office, said, oh, I'd be like, enough. This, I get the shtick. <laughs> yeah, it was shtick the whole time. <laughs> I, by the way, 10.0 on the fit. People it, well, were saying yeah, your aesthetic was very much the set. Like you just, you vibe with the set perfectly. Yeah, no, I look like a million dollars. See? A stylist. Like, no, but that's, that's what I'm talking about with. You don't need one with what's the, what's the guy matt reif. matt reif like i can sit there and be like i look fucking awesome there there's nothing wrong with that i can be like i look like trash that's as good as i can look in those moments so some people got inner demons <laughs> yeah but that's i just true. could not look at matt reif and rate him that's uh, yeah dave that was fucked. now that to he's look gone at can someone you rate him and rate him i'm not gonna rate him that's crazy he's he's hot yes that's where i just don't i don't do that i would never want someone to do that to me ever the whole this guy's made like He's made it about his looks to a degree. You're allowed to rate. On a scale of hot to not, he's hot. 
That's good. Mm-hmm. He's the Political. definitely the best looking comedian I've ever seen. Who would be number two? Exactly. I don't know. Who were you gonna say? I was gonna say something. Who were you gonna say? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> oh, Josh on selling say, okay. sunset. <laughs> Josh featured in the newest season of Sell. I don't even know how Josh has time for us. He's on everything. <laughs> I know. My sister texted me this morning. Um, how the fuck is Josh on my favorite show? I was like, what show? She's like, Selling Sunset. He's going to have so many new fans. <laughs> Wait, he, did he film this a while ago? Yes. Because I remember him talking about it. He looks so baby in it, too. Mm-hmm. What is he doing? Is he buying a house or something? I don't know. I didn't Being watch it. Can we, oh, can we watch the clip? Sure. Yeah. I do social media, and then I also have a production company and a venture fund now. And oh, dope. I own multiple companies, and I invest in everything. So, yeah. This yeah. generation is just different. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Is it soundproof in here? Uh, hey, it's well, looking. Let's find out. Ah! Did I you hear- say it's soundproof. Okay. Hello, what was that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. She had me screaming down there, though. I mean, what were you guys doing? Christening the house? You said I needed a husband. I was making sure I secured the husband. <laughs> okay? Yeah. That was not very long, so I'm not very impressed. <laughs> She's selling something else. Mm. Maybe not sunset. Yeah, they're acting like he's going to buy the house. He's looking at the houses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Finally, BFF's taking Raising Cane's Miami. I'm eating it all during the show. I apologize. Next week, we'll be at the Raising Cane's drive through in Miami on Washington Ave at 5 p.m. Me, Bree, Josh, we'll see you there. Hell yeah. See you in Miami. Yep. Going to show you my new house. Oh, yeah. The big, huge mansion with it's the toilets nice. that don't fit your genitals. We're, we're, we're getting along <laughs> with it. We're fixing it out. Matt Rife coming up next. All right. Uh, BFF episode special guest matt rife welcome to the show before we get into it josh is not here o'malley's in i guess i he like i don't know what happened he he was coming here and he like got lightheaded and he woke up on the floor or something what is that what happened I don't yeah know. that's an accurate depiction that's basically what he said, what he said yeah. so we think he was hung over. yeah i think he might be he had a night last night he's like 21 <laughs> Drink a Powerade and get over here, dude. Yeah, it is kind of nuts. I mean, it's 12, 12 o'clock. So whatever, we'll we'll go into it. Um, welcome to the show, Matt. What are you in town Thank for? You. Uh, just press for uh, for my upcoming special on Netflix for November 15th. Oh, so that thing's coming. What, well, today? What Today's the what? what? Seven. The... Next Come week. Out so it comes out next week. A week, a week from yeah. today. Yeah. A week from today. about it. Yeah, so All right. Just popping into a bunch of fun places. Thanks for having me in. Where where are you coming from? You said you're exhausted. So are you going out or are you just running uh, around doing press No, all no, over the just place? nonstop sleep, dude. I, I have 10 shows a week, two shows, five nights a week. Um, so I was coming from Omaha, Nebraska, the, uh, which is exhausting even like driving Omaha. through. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> just, just long weeks, man. And even my days off, I'm like flying to do stuff like this, like to do promo and take meetings and stuff like that. So it's it's just uh it's a blessing in disguise, dude. How big is like uh, how big the venues you play in nowadays? Uh average I'd say like 3000, but we do anywhere from like 1800 to 7000. It kind of varies in that range. Yeah. I mean we, we it's so funny like my agents and everything wanted me to do like these like arenas when this tour went on sale cuz they figured it was going to sell way more than I did, but I'm used to selling no tickets at all. So I was like, no, let's just let's do theaters first. And now we're we're doing so many theaters, it would have made sense to do arenas, but it's a completely different type of show. Like I I had only performed at a handful of theaters ever in my life when this came about. So I was like, can I just enjoy learning and and and, and enjoying playing a theater first? So I didn't I didn't want to like jump right into it. It would it would have been so much. Got it's it. a different show. I'm going to start. So I, I was saying we, we have a new office in Chicago. It's a little fucked up. So you guys are like far away for me to see. So I can't. You guys are like is looking for, far away. So I got to ask Grace um, and, and Bree, like how good looking is he in person? Hilarious. Like zero through ten. Go ahead. Hurt my feelings. That's crazy. I, I'm not going to I would never him. do Why? that to someone. His that's whole thing is about that being and how good looking he is. I would have given him a real rating. That's that's our Yeah, but you can. You're him. a guy. That's I don't I, know. You're what mean. do you mean I can't? I, I'll rate guys all day long. I don't care. He's handsome, Dave. Why, well, thank you. Really handsome, Dave. Thank you. Not handsome enough to mention it on uh, Men's Health Magazine, but... Uh, <laughs> well, but, no, we'll you know, get into enough, that. We'll, we'll, we'll get <laughs> into that. Whenever you It's in our play sheet, but I figure yeah, right, right off the top. I don't know. Uh, suddenly, we're, we're in the, like... We're, we're the too shy to rate people right to their face. Oh, dude, what have we insane, ever Dave? rated people to their face before? They haven't. We haven't had a comedian who had a thing about 
being good looking and whether it was hard to be a good looking comedian. And then we comedians talk about- are usually ugly. He's a good looking comedian. You're okay. very sweet. Bro. You want to rate, you. Dave? You want to rate? I go for it, dog. That's my <laughs> point, Grace. It's too far away. Grade All me right. on a blur. Are you he's not him? a ten. He's a nine point nine. Like, Dave, I don't know. He's six and a half, seven. He's an average. I, I. There's nothing I can see. I can't. You guys all look like the same. I can't tell anything. If all I right. look like them, I'm winning, dude. I'm doing great. Stop it, Matt. Stop it. Are you guys flirting? Stop it. Okay, so I'll go through the play sheet. I want to know that right off the bat. So you, you let, let's play the first viral TikTok, which I haven't watched yet. Um, this is how you went viral, which I guess you're is like you you talk to people in the crowd, right? Uh, I do from time to time. Yeah, that's not a thing. I. No, it is. I mean, I would viral I would TikTok. just say it pro- more properly than that. Yeah, I do. I do. I do crowd work that happens to go viral quite often. Yeah, yeah that's but I more, do way more than that. Crowd crowd work is the proper way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, crowd work. I said talk to people in the crowd, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds like I'm interviewing them. All right, let's see it. Did you have a job the entire time you Oh, were God. You worked in the ER also? Are you working with a hero? <laughs> so how did he not do anything if he, if he worked in the ER? Aside from work, he didn't do anything. <laughs> he was saving lives. What did you do? You work for American Airlines? Oh, fuck. You! Oh my god! Where are my bags? Oh, what have you been doing? Saving lives all day? Yeah, what have you been doing? Peanuts? Peanuts? Can you put your seat back up? This much. So that's so more. Stupid. No, I, th- that, that is more interesting like that's not planned right so that that's all stuff that's kind of top of your top of your head being quick on your feet type stuff yeah it's fun man it's just something i've, I've only been doing it for like uh, probably like three years i never really did crowd work or anything and then it was just something i had fun doing because like a, as a comic you, you obviously build your set for like a year or two sometimes three years to like work, work towards a special but in doing that like you are working on building your material but Every comic would tell you they get bored of their own material. If you're, especially as many shows as I'm doing, like you, it does feel a little bit robotic sometimes. And I, I hate feeling that way. I hate feeling like I have to perform rather than I get to perform. So crowd work is like a very unique experience that happens at that individual show. It's not really to be duplicated. So I also have no idea what's going to happen. Sometimes, dude, don't get me wrong. Sometimes shows I'm do, I'll do some crowd work, you get nothing out of it. And you're like, all right, fuck it. Back into some jokes I go. But it's just something like spontaneous that's fun for me to do and that way i don't burn all through my material posting it online a lot of comics do post their material online but then you pay for a ticket to go see them and you see the exact same jokes they just told you for free on the internet so that's why I, that's why i started doing crowd work because i was working towards filming specials and i always wanted to do that but i was like well if i give away this material people are already going to know the jokes when they come see me live so that was just something i started to do for fun yeah, you know, it's interesting because my favorite comedian of all time is Chris Rock, like my absolute favorite. Oh, Tambourine was amazing. And I, so I watched him, like his HBO, all the specials, and then I went and saw him live, and I guess as an idiot, I didn't real like it was verbatim, like the exact same show, which kind of, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it speaks to what I guess you were just talking about. Yeah, it, thank it, you. Would I have gone to the show if I just knew I was going to see I mean, everything, the way he delivered it, it was so, it was literally the same exact word for word, timing for timing show. All right. I'm so glad you had that experience and you, and you have that perspective on it. Because so many people have no idea that's I had how no it idea works. So they'll think I only it. do crowd work and that's, they'll think that's why I'm posting it because that's all I have. But I'm really yeah. trying to be considerate. Yeah, no, I, it makes sense to me. Um, so we went back and forth. Uh, you went viral in a video with the men's health, which you, you mentioned talking about the mm-hmm. fitness journey where you said people don't want to laugh at attractive people. Yeah. Um, and you don't want people staring at your arms. I actually think I agreed with you during this. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I said, think I was the main one who agreed or didn't. No, agree. you said, uh, kind of a little, a little, yeah, uh, some, a little some off comments, I suppose. Yeah. That's fine. We hadn't met. It's okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Let's see. I look we, at people all the time. and don't like them just by how they look. <laughs> I get it. I'm not mad whatsoever. <laughs> You don't think that was oh. a crazy clip? It is crazy, but he's right. It's harder to laugh at somebody who's like physically like, and I'm yeah. not saying he is because I think that's crazy that he thinks he's that good looking. <laughs> that guy's like, uh, I don't know, he's average. <laughs> Seeing it firsthand, <laughs> some of the girls you could tell clearly were there because of just his looks and not his comedy. He's not even that good looking. He's definitely good looking though. We're not saying he's ugly. That's just a crazy thing to say. No, I don't think he's ugly, but I would never be like, oh shit, this guy's like Henrik Lundquist out here. You're just a wild person to like talk about how hot you are. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, it was more brave than you. You're forgiven, Dave. <laughs> he, he, but uh, you no, called I, him ugly. I didn't. No, I didn't say it was ugly. Yeah, it actually evens it out. It evened out a little Wait bit. Wait I didn't say ugly. I said he's not Henrik Lundqvist. Who's like he's that's he, a crazy person. That's who is your that? hot What's that guy? reference? Yeah. <laughs> King Henrik. He was the goalie for the Rangers. You did you see the picture of him? He's a beautiful man. What a reference. Yeah, crazy. Well, he's what a well known goalie. <laughs> he he's like a very famous hockey player and he's also famously attractive or i don't know brad pitt and again i can't see Should've him brad here, pitt. but when yeah i didn't get the oh my god like uh george clooney i see it's like holy shit he's a classically beautiful man oh, of course of so, course but i do i agreed with your point that people it's easier to laugh at somebody who is not good looking maybe a little fat it's like you sympathize it, it's always when somebody is, is is really good looking really successful i feel like it's harder to laugh at that so i agreed with what you were saying as the only thing i disagreed i don't know how good looking he is but you guys are well, never gonna know that's, never the, gonna that's see also him. the thing about eyeballs right is it's it's subjective like some people find me fucking hideous and some people think i'm good looking i guess but if anybody cared to ask, I, I don't think I'm good looking at all. I look at people like uh, like an Austin Butler, Jason Alordi, a Brad Pitt. Like these are traditionally well, attractive. Harry Styles, beautiful men. Yeah. I would never in a million fucking years think I could even stand next to those people. Well, I'm wildly insecure about my looks. And I think it's a very important emphasis to realize there's a huge difference as to how you see yourself versus how other people see you. And if that's all I ever fucking hear is shit about my looks, I go, okay, well, clearly other people think this. You have to acknowledge, it, otherwise people would be like, "Oh, you're like pretending to be this humble thing. You know you're hot." It's like, fine, if you think this, I'll make fun of that. Sure, that's fair. But if everyone's saying you're hot, women, and I was looking through all this, you have a beautiful girlfriend. You know mm -hmm. you're not. So I don't. I'm calling bullshit because if you're going to these shows and you're hearing women be like, "Oh, he's so attractive. He's so attractive." A beautiful girl you've had your girlfriend you know you're attractive i'm not saying you have to be like um okay. you know these guys but you have to have confidence okay your right, so, uh, that's actually that's confident. actually a perfect that's actually a perfect setup because uh, okay so then what 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 do i do then say say everybody thinks i'm attractive let's let's throw that out there as a totally hypothetical obviously not true but as a hypothetical say everybody thinks i'm attractive right then I reference it and I'm the asshole. It's like, which, which, which one is it? It's like, am I, am I not attractive or do I only have a career because of my looks? Which one is it? Well, I think you can be both. You, you can own it and still have a career. I mean, let me put it this way. Not, not all attractive. I'm sure there's plenty of attractive comedians who <laughs> are not successful. Potentially. So I guess that can't be it entirely, right? But it's like, well, I'm, I'm not allowed to acknowledge what everybody else thinks. That'd be crazy. No, of course you're uh, allowed to acknowledge it. I don't. I love, listen, that's a beautiful problem to have, to have. I wish I was walking down the street. Everyone's like, look at fucking Dave. He's fucking hot as shit. I would own that. Like, you'd believe. That's all I'm thinking. You, yeah, you can be funny and attractive. I mean, look at me, funny and attractive. There you go. Bang. I know you just fucking own both of it. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I suppose you can, but I mean, people are still gonna say whatever they want to say about it. I, I personally, that's the only thing that upset me about it was that you, that uh, Brie assumed I was talking about myself in that fashion. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm just speaking from other people's point of view. If you say I'm attractive, cool, I'll, I'll think of myself that way. But I'm wildly insecure with my looks. I would never in a million fucking years like legitimately be like, oh, I'm good looking. That's fucking insane. I have a joke about it in my first special, and that. I have like 12 minutes in my first special OnlyFans about how ridiculous it is that people think I'm good looking when my entire life I wasn't it. Therefore, I don't see myself that way. Like I had I had to be funny, dude. I was ugly as fuck for like 22 years, dude. Till I got my teeth done. Oh my God, nobody would even look at me. You had your teeth done? Oh yeah, man. Have you ever seen the, my first season of Wild Now, which hopefully nobody did? Uh, yeah, dude, I had Ohio teeth. It was bad, man. It was so bad. <laughs> I will. I'm looking at so the crowd where I have blown up on social media. Matt developed <laughs> predominantly female fan base who was eager to hear Matt talk back to them. So you do this, and then I I saw you say a lot of times the guys the girls come with their boyfriends. Boyfriends end up being fans as well. Um, so is that like a thing of yours? Do you have do you not like the 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 thought 
and I'm guessing by what you're saying that you have like a female base you want to be equal or like does I'd that I'd love for it I'd love for it to be equal. Yeah. I mean look, I'm incredibly grateful for women. Without women, I never would have like gained the momentum I did on social media. I'm so grateful for that. But in doing that, a lot of dudes didn't like that, I suppose. So it put off a lot of guys without them ever even taking a chance to watch my comedy. Which is what I'm so ex- uh, so exci- excited about with this special upcoming is it's like I finally get to do an hour on a verified platform that people respect and can be like, okay, yeah. let's give him a chance. Even if we hate him because certain people like him, let's give him a chance, hopefully. So, I watched it. And did you watch I it? Was, I was pleasantly surprised because oh, so I sweet. felt Thank victim you. to the you only do crowd work shit because I just okay. listened to the internet. And then I watched it. I was like, oh, wow, no crowd work. It was really good. It was really funny. Thank you. Very yeah. sweet. Thank mm-hmm. you. It was good. Yeah, it's interesting. It's because like my gu- my comedy... You could feel free to disagree, but I, I feel like I feel like my comedy is more for guys than it is women. Yeah, I watched it with my boyfriend, and he was like a lot of the like the the cum shit. Like he was like <laughs> dying at it. I'm like I don't really get it. That should have been the name of the special, Matt Wright cum shit. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fantastic. You needed me. You needed me to like Joshify you. That's oh, that would have been great. Yeah. yeah, like Josh <laughs> has that obviously because he's very attractive kid, mm-hmm. dude. Passed out, can't handle his alcohol, whatever. <laughs> um, but that's why we teamed up. He had an audience I didn't have. I have a predominantly male audience, mm-hmm. or yeah, still. So that that's essentially what you're saying. And once you do get in that, I, I'll so I agree with everything you're saying. Once people think something's on looks, it's harder to get taken seriously, regardless of the talent maybe behind it. I just don't agree with you that you're insecure about your looks at this point because I just think at some level, if you hear it enough from enough women that or whatever that you're good looking, it starts to set in, hey, I'm good looking. Like, Yeah, you know, but then somebody says uh, he's not even that good looking and all those compliments go, Oh, well, dude, I never said you're not Henrik Lundqvist, even like that's. I mean, God, dude, isn't it takes Henrik it takes one person. You know, when you're performing on stage in front of let's say, let's say a thousand people are in the audience, nine hundred and ninety eight people can be laughing their ass off, and if you see the two people not laughing, you'll think you're tanking. Like people's really? individual opinions have such an effect on you. Are you insane? Are you just that? Like to, to me, a comedian can't be that insecure. Well, no, you have to have an air of confidence to control an audience and like to put to put on a show for sure. But yeah, do you? Everybody wants to please everybody. It's an impossible task, and you can't aim for that. But of course, you want to please everybody. You want everybody to think the best of you. So it's, you have to try to the best of your ability. But yeah, do people's individual opinions definitely hurt? It's just up to you how much you're going to allow them to hurt you. So, like, do you read all the comments and stuff? Because you replied to our shit, and I know that's not the first mm-hmm. time you've gone in. So how aware, or, like, how did you come about of what we even said, for example? Uh, people were tagging him, tagging me in it, obviously. And I was like, I, I, I thought it was kind of rude, not really a fair chance to, like, get to know you guys. Like, I, I'm a fan of the podcast and what you've built here at Barstool, and Josh is obviously a homie. So I was just like, ah, I appreciate that he stuck up for me and felt relatable, uh, which was flattering <laughs> <laughs> that he considers me as good looking as him. Thank God. Um, so, I mean, yeah, people were just tagging me in it. And I um, I, I have such oh, I have such a bad problem not responding back to people. Uh, on me the too. Because yeah. I'm, I'm an in-person confrontational person. So I, when people like talk shit on the internet, not considering what you guys do and talking shit, but people who talk shit on the internet, it drives me insane that they think there's no consequences to that. So whether arguing with somebody on the, on, on the internet actually does anything, I'm just, I'm a very confrontational person. It's very immature of me to think that's going to get any point across whatsoever. But sometimes you just have to vent, you know, I'm a human being and sometimes I want to say how I actually feel. I have a question. All yeah. along these lines, I'm looking at the next sheet, you, the the tour dates and how the tickets were just flying. Congratulations. That's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm looking at what appears to be a tour graphic calendar sold out. And my, you just have a fuckboy picture on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, what like if we're going for I don't want the looks thing. And then you got like a boy band picture, basically. What yeah. was the thought on that? Because when this tour happened, the be- beginning of this year, from when things started, like August of last year through, I'd say probably probably April of this year, the majority of people who were coming to my shows were women. Guys just weren't going to come out. So I was like, okay, if we're about to start on this massive tour and try to sell more tickets than I ever could have imagined in a lifetime, in a one-year span, I was like, I got to sell tickets, dude. Listen, if you can reel them in with a shirtless picture, cool. They'll come for that reason, and hopefully they'll stay for the humor. That's what I was hoping for. I didn't know tickets were going to sell the way they were. I didn't know tickets were going to sell the way that they did. Otherwise, I would have worn a cardigan. (laughs) And you just hate Atlanta. 
Yeah, not a fan of Atlanta. It's all right. Even though I just bought my mom a house like an house like an hour outside of there. Why? What? What is there a reason? I just I I grew up there. Um, the oh, summer between okay. my my junior and senior year of high school, my first manager owned a comedy club down there, and so I lived down there for like a, like four months straight, and I was working my ass off down there. Dude, it's it's hot. The bugs are massive. I'm a big I'm a big nature guy, and. There's just Stone Mountain's a beautiful part. There are beautiful parts of Georgia that have a lot of nature and stuff like that. Atlanta just never had anything like hobby wise that really interests me. So, I mean, I think it's okay to not like certain cities more than others. Some people freak the fuck out when yeah. I say I didn't like it. I've just never really enjoyed um I've just never really enjoyed my my trips there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. There's a lot of cities I don't like. There's cities I love that people might hate. Like, That's how I, a lot of people I, I feel about DC. Ohio. Oh, dude, Ohio's the fucking worst. <laughs> are you kidding me? I went to school there and everyone hates Ohio. So Where'd much. you go to school? Baldwin Wallace. What is that? Yeah, no one knows oh, what no. it is. It's a small, small, tiny school. Do yeah. you know, like, geographically where it is? It's next to Cleveland. Oh, I'm going to Cleveland this weekend, Wait, actually. where did you like, grow up in Ohio? Like, an hour west of Columbus, like middle oh, of nowhere. Oh, nowhere. My population is, like, it's like 1,100 people, I think. Yeah, Actually, that's yeah, tiny. Very, wow. Very tiny. Yeah, Ohio's trash. Yeah, So Ohio's it's like, crazy. people get, when people get so defensive about their hometown, I'm like, have you been anywhere else? I know, but there's you don't a bunch have of cool places. So hard. They rep it so hard. I know. Like, dude, my, DC is my favorite city, which blows so many people's minds because they're like, "How could you?" It's the most political city in the country. Well, I'm so far removed from politics. I'm able to see all the other fun stuff about it, the parks, the memorials, the history, the museums, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just not one of my favorites. That's all. Like, I love Savannah. Savannah's only like a couple hours outside of it. I love That's Savannah. That's like the home of ghosts, right? Oh, dude, ghosts. so much Spooky. fun. So much haunted stuff there. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. Such a nerd over it. Um, th Some of these things may be a little bit in the past because we just, yeah. when, when we make the whole sheet, we go through basically as much stuff as we can find. Uh, mm -hmm. The ideal celebrity boxing match you said uh, you, you'd love to box harry styles i think that was probably a joke you'd probably kill him because he doesn't seem like much of a fighter to me yeah. but you had an issue with the pauls you hate the pauls you still hate logan and jake no actually not i had i had an epiphany of a moment a couple of years ago where i was looking i was kind of looking at what they had built right and i found myself this has the, been the, the best thing for me personally uh, with, with the success I've had in this past year. It, it has changed my maturity and my, my respect levels for other people entirely. Like I used to be such a jealous, bitter person because nothing would happen for me. And you eventually start to doubt yourself. Like, am I delusional? Maybe I suck. How are these people getting the things that I feel like I'm maybe good enough to, to be in the same positions? And then one day it just occurred to me that I go, these dudes are doing everything right. They are phenomenal businessmen. And I think regardless of how, how much you respect what they're doing in boxing, sports, or whatever it may be, who cares? Like, I, I have no right to hate on what they're doing after what they've built. You know what I mean? If, if, any, if, if there's any person for me to get upset about, it would be like the general public of the world. If, if, if I was going to be upset about something, I'd be like, really, this is what people like rather than what this dude creates. He's not he's not responsible for like my perception of him or anybody's perception of him. Like both of them are just building what they want to do, having fun doing what they're doing and they're they're doing a great job. I think they're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, I'd agree. I think when when you if the, you look back on like this era, those two are two of the most successful widely oh, yeah. impressive like on the business side. Yeah, um, I don't think it matters if you're a fan of what they're doing, but you can't disrespect what they've built, you know. I didn't realize this. How old are you? 28. And you dated Kate Beckinsale? Ah, hilarious. Uh, yeah, when I was younger. How, how young? Uh, out of respect for my girlfriend now, I'm not going to talk about exes. <sighs> Good play. Yeah. Mm. I know. I know. Sorry to shut that one down. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I that That's wild to me. She's like a, a all-timer for me, but... Oh, yeah. Um, she out of respect <laughs> to the ex, we won't talk about it. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. But she's but she's very sweet and she's she's hilarious. That counts as talking. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. Uh, you hosted the AVNs. Oh, Two dude, yeah, that was insane. <laughs> dream come true. That was a dream come true. You're a big porn guy. Who isn't, dude? You have an iPhone. I have what an you, iPhone. What are you playing, Candy Crush, like a virgin, dude? Of course I'm watching porn, man. <laughs> you ever get to pass, pass page like 93 on porn? I, 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 people I, queefing I, into harmonicas and shit, dude. It's wild. I love how you're like, nope, 
can't can't talk about uh Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> Giant porn guy though. There's a no emotions porn in porn. Day. No one's jerking off with love in their heart. You know what I, I mean? Don't, like, don't, tell don't say that at the AVNs. At, like that was new- that was one thing that was very interesting because like it's it's obviously easy to go into hosting like an AVN job and like make fun of what they do because it is hilarious. Mm. But like that <laughs> night is like so genuinely important to them. Like that is legitimately the Oscars to them, and they are very proud of what they. How did done. You, how did you get to host it? Why you? I think it was because it was around the time that TikTok really started to catch on, oh, okay. and like I was starting to become a known performer, I suppose. And they always have they have a history of of stand up comedians hosting it, okay. And it's usually like old creepy comics who have been doing it like forty years, who really are just like gawking at these women. Yeah. Versus, I think I think they just wanted to go and try to bring in like a younger demographic, and it was fun. I mean, everybody I met was like genuinely so sweet. Like nobody was arrogant about being like the hottest person there, which is incredible to me because like these are women that guys literally put on a pedestal like they're like the sexiest possible thing they can imagine and none of them act like it like they were all they're all very sweet I, I, t- I tried to not shake as many hands as possible. A lot of fist bumps, but Purell uh, the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were all very sweet. It was fun, dude. It was a massive theater in Vegas. We did a Resorts World, which was like forty five hundred. Do you think there's like a giant orgy after? If there is, I wasn't invited. Oh, that sucks. Uh, d- it was. It was so funny. They were, everybody was so nice, and it was not what people thought. Every single one of my friends who knew I was hosting this thing was like, "Oh, you're gonna sleep with everybody." I didn't sleep with anybody. <laughs> I went and had a couple the drinks. I went and passed out. Yeah. <laughs> 12 year old's dream I know I know he's a 12 year old me was kicking me in the shins like oh fuck somebody even if it's one of the dudes just somebody be a part of it I uh I don't want to play it because it's so awkward but I, I want to play, play, play it oh god Austin's <laughs> already smiling so I I don't know do you do you know this Grace and Bree that I did a like a I think it was a three or four part so four part four series. part documentary on the AVNs yeah a yeah, big fan what? over here it's quite awkward. It's hilarious. People love it. Old school Barstool people. Oh, I got to see this. You guys got some sharp looking dildos. What were you doing before dildos? I know it wasn't dildos. Uh, I was a money manager. Help I can manage tell. People's money. I can fucking tell. <laughs> you get the two green lights, you match Marcus London's speed and force. Oh, Jesus my Christ. God. Just like that, dude. Okay, oh, you're good. The my, finger king. Like, oh, fucking oh, dude. Dude. That was a world record, by the way. <laughs> Is your hand okay? Holy shit. That was like, that was actually a techno. That that was a girl that they had programmed. And like the way you did it, set something off where obviously she came and they had the timer and I set the world record. Just no big dude. Let's move along. Yeah. But it cost you carpal tunnel dog. Holy shit. No, I know. And you can't do it. It's like, that was like an athletic event. Like I wasn't doing it. It was like, (laughs) I was stepping in like, all right, that's the record. Let's see if I can fucking beat it. But yeah, it was, was that uh, the, was that the only sensor on the device or like, would you have gotten extra points if you like kissed its neck and shit like that? I think (laughs) you would have romanticized it. The guy who made the doll was, he's probably still talking about me. There's probably like, this is, I don't know when I did that. (laughs) That had to be, 10 years ago that was a long ass time to be the guy right. to make the doll is yeah. so funny i know i want to hang out with that guy i don't think Pick his brain. you do you're gonna get a whole mold of you made <laughs> jesus dave yeah. for a that's guy so who funny. hates bits that's that's quite the bit well it's i used to funny. do that all the time o'malley i know like, bring it back we used to Fingering? every every couple of weeks i travel or make videos at these weird events so i throw on the talks and do it like i went to the gerbil convention like similar to the football. avians yeah Whatever, whatever was I thought could be interesting content, we go, and I just ran out of time as we got bigger. But what's the uh, most? What's what's the last one you remember doing? They were all like the same time. The uh, the gerbil convention was great. Uh, <laughs> that's I remember that they were all. We probably did like ten of them all in a year, and then it just got. And I go with Dan and like Kevin. We go to other things, World Tobogganing Championships, and like Maine, whole bunch of stuff. Um, That's so cool. King Richard's Fair, all these different things. Uh, anyways, fun. Matt on airport and flight. So I'm probably gonna eat this up because I always get. Dave hates. Hate he's it. like he has all the rules for flying. And oh, shit. it's the worst, and they're inconsistent, dude. I've missed bag checks by one minute. And people be like, sorry, you got to take a different flight now. And then I've had people be like, oh, not a problem at all. I'll walk, I'll walk you through security. So, it so it's all personal person. preference. Yeah. yeah. And they'll act like it's all like up to code. And it's like, no, no, it's not. Dude, you're, just, you're just being a bitch right now. 
and they're also outdated. Like there is no reason why like your seat back up down when you're land. Like what does that have to do? I I've heard it's an insurance thing because if you this is a conspiracy ever. I have no idea if there's any truth to this whatsoever, but it makes sense to me. The reason they teach you to like put your head down in a crash and stuff like that is to make because sh- if you crash headfirst in an airplane, not only are you for sure gonna die, <laughs> but just to make sure, like if you're in that position, your spine would shoot through your fucking head, like you would nice. it would it would kill you instantly, right? So the theory is that they have you get in that position to make sure you die because the, the lawsuit if you survive a, a commercial plane crash is like ridiculous. That's a wild. It theory. makes sense to me. I get everything's run by money, dude. The whole the whole operation is just all just money. So speaking of that, would you ever start flying private, or are you a commercial guy still? <sighs> like you must fly private with all these shows all over the place. No, nah, we've got we've got a tour bus. Uh, I've oh. I've flown private, and it is incredible. It's game changer for sure. I'm terrified to have my own private jet because I'm a huge Leonard Skinner fan. And, uh, you know, I don't yep. want to foreshadow anything. Yeah, no, that's a uh, I mean, it changes everything. That's the only thing I've said since Barstool's made money. And if it all went away, that's the only thing I'd miss. Like You still have the, you have the jet? No, I don't. But I w- will fly private all the time. It's not my own. We used oh, to. Man, the company that so owned cool. us prior had it. But it, it, avoiding security, that's the only thing. Oh, that's um, that's the worst part of it. Yeah, dude. I'm so sick of going through airports. And that's why we got the bus, dude. It's changing everything. And now I get to be like with my best friends for like this entire tour. Tour bus how, is kind why? of fun. How big is your so bus? Much road fun. life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not bad at all. It's just me, uh, my tour manager, and who's been my best friend and my roommate for the past nine years, uh, my videographer, and then two of my openers. So just the five of us. This next line, uh, you've already said Ohio is trash. <laughs> you you are an Ohio State fan. You're from Columbus. That is the one thing I will rep every day. Yeah, big Ohio State fan. So big time. I'm a Michigan grad. So. Shut. Uh, this makes so much sense. You should have opened with that. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on all this uh, this crying Ryan Day and this whole trying to bring down Michigan because you can't beat us thing? I said, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? You guys are an actual competitor for the first time in two two decades. So we got we got to take every advantage we can get, man. I'm I'm hoping. I'm still hoping. That something happens with the playoffs where a we a we fight you guys for our rivalry and I would love to see you guys in the championship just a, a, a rematch of that I think that's what I'm praying for right almost now. had it last year we both lost you guys were yeah close, until we had yeah. the worst kick in college football history dude the worst kick wasn't even that far dude it happened 35 seconds before I was about to go on stage for my New Year's Eve show I was so are you like a huge fan. Livid. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, listen. I'm not. I can't rep like you know. I can't name players for the past decades. You know what I mean? But like, I'm not. I'm not listening to stats. But yeah, that's the, it's the one sports team I do like actively watch. If uh, Marvin Harrison, were... he, if Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't win a Heisman in his college career, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be devastated. Uh, you were named. Uh, saying, hey, go ahead. It's, I understand. This is the rivalry. I get it. Talk your shit. No, there's nothing to talk. We beat the fuck out of you guys every year. You haven't beat us every since the day- year. Yeah, like twice in the past ten years. You guys haven't beaten us since the days of COVID. Oh my pre-COVID. god, that's COVID. COVID don't count. That's bubble football. Dude. No, I, well, no pre-COVID, you haven't won so that that long. So you ago. needed half. You 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 needed a large portion of the world to die for you guys to have a good football no, team. When I when I went to Michigan, we had won ten years in a row. It's been like black and white TV the last time. Well, you guys yeah, dude, beat us. the seventies were different. Uh, <laughs> oof. Forbes. So you came in number nine on Forbes top fifty creators. That's pretty impressive. What that is this crazy. list? Other notable lists: Mr. Beast one, Jake Paul yeah. three, Charlie DeMeo five, Alex Cooper twelve, Addison Ray twenty three, Josh Richards twenty five, Alex Earl forty two. So nine is pretty man. solid. Man. Yeah, you beat Jay. <laughs> That's crazy. So this thing accurate? You made twenty five million last year. This is uh, accurate, right? It's not. It's not entirely accurate. No, they round up for what, your, what they project your year overall is going to be, and um, I'm doing okay. I'm doing better than I, did, I was a year ago for sure. So what? Like, what were you a year ago? Is how how new is this? Is this- a year ago? The, I'd say, but before last year when everything started, I was on average probably making between forty and sixty grand a year. Oh if, wow! If, so this if is that. an alley that. oop. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, um, it was like I can't tell you how many times it got month. To month. I'd be on like my last month's worth of rent before I was like, okay, I have to apply for a regular job, and something would happen. I'd book, I'd book a small TV thing, or somebody would be gracious enough to let me like go on the road with them for a month or something like that, where I could build up a couple months worth of rent ahead of me. But yeah, it it, it changed a lot for sure. Fast, for, I, that's crazy. So fast, dude! It's changed everything. I'm so grateful, man. I was, 
July of last year, I was, if you ask anybody that knows me, I was, I was highly considering just giving up on everything. Like I, I was looking at moving to a different state, taking up just like a regular job, something with more stability, more security, I suppose. I mean, I wasn't going to be happy, but I wasn't happy being rejected for 11 years in a row. You know, eventually you start to go, maybe I'm delusional. Maybe, maybe I'm not funny. Well, and you're lucky enough to find a platform where people will actually have access to you. And lucky enough, people, some people uh, seem to enjoy it. Yeah, it's a good story, though, sticking with it for 11 years on the opposite side of things. Oh, thank you. Thank, well, you know, you have to put in your time. And they, uh, uh, my friend has a great quote all the time. He says, people don't fail, they quit. Hmm. And I think that's true in a lot of cases. Do you ever think? Like I, with Barcel is the only thing I've done. But so eleven years struggling, you're thinking of quitting. Mm -hmm. I always think of that. Like there could be versions of you out there. Eleven years, same shit. Maybe as talented, they just don't. That one thing, like your your thing broke on TikTok, right? Originally, yeah. yeah like that you was ever the main wonder thing. that? Like Alex Earl, take her for example. What I don't even know what clicked for her first, but. She does like the the glam posts and stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of girls doing it, and then it's like something happens, and it's like whatever you get thrown into the tech, and your whole life changes overnight. It could just oh, as easily probably not. It's wild when you look at it. Oh, it's like dude, it's, it's luck of the draw, dude. It's luck of the algorithm, man. I've 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 been asked that a million times, and I've I've helped comic friends of mine who call me are like, "What what did you do? Like, what advice can you give?" I'm like, "Dude, I I didn't do anything different. Yeah. I used the regular hashtags, and I just I wasn't even posting consistently. I had no game plan or anything." I just told my friends, I was like, consistency for sure is key. Try to shoot it at the best quality you possibly can if you can afford a camera. Like when I started doing TikTok stuff, I, I, I had to borrow money from a friend to, to buy a camera to take on the road with me. I was literally like, they would call my name to go on stage and I'd have to like press record in the back of the room and hurry up and run around stage and go on stage <laughs> out of breath. So I mean, I didn't do anything um, like that specific to, to, to launch me into what happened. And there's... So many comedians who are way funnier than I am have been doing it longer than I have. That I mean, they're they're long overdue for their flowers, and unfortunately, maybe a digital generation just doesn't have a place for them, which is so sad. So I mean, I don't I don't I don't know why it ended up being me. I'm just I'm incredibly grateful, and I, I hope to just uh, keep pleasing the people who do follow me and got me this far. This next, and we're, we're wrapping up here. Let you get okay. out of here. We have a game after, but your most overrated comedian, Jerry Seinfeld. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> You're showing I, your age, Dave. Am I age? Um, <laughs> da listen, Jerry Seinfeld is a genius joke writer, right? There's no denying that whatsoever. He has one of the most successful TV shows of all time. There is no discredit whatsoever. But if I'm talking about comedians that I like to watch, that's just not one of them. I don't like joke stand-up where it's like premise at a punchline, premise at a punchline, a joke about a thing, a joke about a thing. I like people who talk about stuff. Like Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais are my two favorite comedians of all time. People who can articulate their their certain perspective on maybe a risk, a more risque topic that people aren't uh, as uh, so I love comfortable Ricky Gervais. talking about. We agree there. So are you a Larry David guy? Um, I, I'm not incredibly familiar with his work but what i have seen with kirby enthusiasm and everything i mean he's, he's a genius of course i just yeah with jerry i mean i respect jerry i just like i don't i don't want to go to a show yeah that's all got it. fair do um, a jerry right. impersonation <laughs> what's the deal with tiktok all they do is talk to the ground something i bad. might not even be able to do that's not bad <laughs> Uh, we nice. got a game. Kill Three. Myself. Sorry. I'll kill myself. Why would you? Be? I, don't know. I thought that wasn't that it's bad. Like a word vomit. <laughs> so bad. It was good though. God damn it. So canceled. Yeah, we do. We have a fuck Mary kill, but I don't know. If... They're not a ton Who of like it? people. People. So I don't think it'll be an issue. Okay. It's not like okay. Cool. Let's play it. Like there's not. It's not. See, yeah, All see. right. Oh god. Okay. Ooh, oh, damn. Damn. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is so not going to be Cook fun. Dan Cook is where you fell in love with the being a comedian, right? Or what inspired you? Yeah. Fuck. Him, this, is, <laughs> this is so hard. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to marry Ricky Gervais. He's just, he seems gentler, I think. And he's very... I feel like he's very communicative. He's very intelligent. He's very he's very well spoken. I feel like I could I could handle that long term. Now my fucking are are, are killing. God damn it! <laughs> my instinct says to fuck Dane because I feel like he has a lot of energy. Like he's very known for being a very active performer. So I feel like the sex could be good. But also something about Dave, he can just romanticize you with his words. He has a real real way of storytelling. Ah, oh, God damn it. 
Dane, I'm so sorry. I gotta kill Dane. I gotta fuck Chappelle. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Dane. I love you. I'll I'll fuck you on the side. I promise. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Chappelle, you get a cigarette after sex. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's so ready yeah, to go. You know what I mean? It's like a sensual He's got those voice. new arms now. <laughs> yeah. He worked out. He's sleeveless. Just something about it. Oh, okay. All right. This is this is interesting. Uh, oh, interesting! You guys chose red flags over Matthew Stephen Reif. Uh, I'll, I'll kill, I'll kill red flags because it's just crowd work and it was Miami and it was a nightmare. And I, I did that special, that special specifically to appease the people who were coming to shows and just yelling out red flag, do red flags all the time. So I'm gonna kill that one. It's just crowd work, which people think I already only do anyways. I'm going to going to marry OnlyFans because it was loyal to me. I built it with just my best friends, and that was the first step I took into creating my own things. I was just soaking on a friend's couch about how nobody wanted to work with me. Nobody wanted to give me a special or a, a half hour or 15 minutes or anything, and it was the first step in being like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll take matters into my own hands, and I'll at least, I'll at least film this for the people who already like me and are already fans of me. Like, let me at least feed them. That's why we named it OnlyFans, actually. Not just so that when people Googled Matt Rife OnlyFans, this was the first thing to come up, but I was so like, smart. this is for the people who are already fans of me, and I wanted to thank them and, 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 and grant them some kind of thing, some new thing to be a fan of and we also crowdfunded that like we we raised like over 25 grand for that special like it was made for them by them and uh the publicity didn't didn't hurt with that one as well and i'm gonna i'm gonna fuck natural selection it's just so much fun i'm so happy to get to take this like to a, a more verified platform because youtube is fantastic for being accessible and everything but people don't take you serious like the, the amount of comments on both those other specials that'll be like uh, this is exactly where it should be. You know what I mean? Like, it's he's not a Netflix comic. It's like this is the first one of people. I think people who, who even don't like me without knowing me have to at least tune in to be like, all right, let's see if he's trash or not. Yeah. But here's the thing: like, even if they what, think that, still got the view. It's interesting you say that because didn't like Andrew Schultz reverse? Like he he went didn't didn't he go his most recent? Wasn't it paid on? He did his own platform. I thought it was YouTube. Like he didn't do Netflix because he thought, if I'm recalling this, he thought Netflix tried to kind of edit it. And, and he didn't want them to have any control, and he yeah, went he reverse. Wanted full edit, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, hap that happens all the time. There's been multiple situations where I've had uh, creative things with with Netflix or or, um, or other studios and stuff. Where creatively, I'm like, listen, I'm not, I'm just not willing to bend on certain creative suggestions because it's it, it changes the product for me. But luckily, Netflix had no problems with with uh, any joke. There was only one joke we took out of this special, um, and it was it was my decision to do it. And I'll probably I'll probably release it on like a, a patreon or something like that just as a bonus footage um but they've been uh, they've been nothing nothing but fantastic schultz is actually the one who got me who inspired me to start posting clips and stuff because he did in 20 might have been 2019 i think it was where he did a thing on at least it was on twitter he was i've never been big on youtube ever i never watch youtube ever but i think it was, i believe it was on twitter where he was doing a thing where every week he would release a new clip of just like a minute long joke which is a formula somebody told me a long time ago um, who, who was, it? it was, uh, Don DC Curry, who's like, uh, he's an old school black comic. And, um, he told me, he's like, you should write one new minute a week, which sounds so easy, right? Imagine you write, write five minutes of stuff a day. If one minute of, of good material comes out of that, you have 52 minutes at the end of your year. You have a new hour for your oh, year. Shit, yeah. And sure. Schultz was the first person to do that. And a lot of it was crowd work, which he's obviously, I mean, a, a god at. Um, he's, he's fantastic. So, I mean, he, he has paved the way for a lot of us to take matters into our own hands and, and has done it brilliantly. So, it made a lot of sense for him to stick to his guns and stick to what got him here. So, I, I only took this opportunity because we still, it, it was a very tight decision on whether we were going to go with a platform for this or self-release because now I have such a prominent fan base that is luckily so surprised supportive i know they would have watched it if i put it on youtube for free probably if, even if i charged for it on a platform a lot of them would have supported that but i was like let's just let's let's collaborate on this and see what comes out of working with netflix got it kind of sick to say you have a netflix special too yeah, exactly sure. oh yeah. it's it's a prideful thing yeah. like there is a piece of you that goes oh can i get verified by yeah, somebody for cool. once <laughs> yeah and like you said it'll be there so people will be like well, i'll give it a whirl yeah exactly. whether they like you or not exactly yeah. exactly Oh come on, guys! God <laughs> I don't damn. get. I don't get this. What, okay. you, what have you do you, done? Do you on know the other podcasts? I know. Are you yeah, familiar? Of course, I know Tana. She's a clown. I don't know what two bears, one cave is. That's Bert Kreischer. Oh. oh well, he's gonna pick them. Those are like, those are. He's gonna marry Bert. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna marry two bears for sure. I got to Bert and Tom have been nothing short of of, of great friends and very supportive with what I've been having going on. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna marry the two bears for Those sure. Are good guys to have. No, yeah, they're both I very funny. Fuck. <laughs> what what am I missing on on? Did he just do canceled? He went he went on canceled. And- got it. Got it. Yeah. Oh, and they were so much fun too. I mean, you obviously would like to kill us if you're hesitating and you're on with us. Yeah, but I've had such a good time with you guys. Like, this has genuinely well, been fun I'm for saying. me. So it's changed. It's it. If you would have, like, you know, before I came in here, maybe would have killed you guys, maybe. But That's now, fair. now, fuck, I, I still got to kill y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> they just can't cancel. Never gave me shit about my looks ever. So just buy, buy, a, buy a, a hair. They, they went on that one. I'm sorry. I've been doing Barstool for two decades, 20 years. This is... The most insulting thing that's ever been <laughs> said about me. Welcome to the success, dog. That someone picked we Tana just got Mojo. Killed, yeah. No, Tana. no, no. I Over promise. Me. I promise. If you guys get revived, I'll, I'll, I'll fuck everybody here. I promise. I promise. Oh. Maybe oh, if one. Josh was here, that hurt. That, if that Josh hurt, was Dave. here, I would have fucked y'all. One hundred percent. I have to like go. We to needed therapy. his looks. I, I know. Awesome. Needed okay. his eyebrows. Ha! <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I gotta fuck Pete. Obviously, we know what's going on there. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna marry Ellen. I feel like uh, two lesbians living together is probably pretty easy. <laughs> nice. And <laughs> ah, Jerry, I gotta kill you. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. <sighs> this is a tough one. I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna fuck Chris Rock's selective outrage because it was a very important special and it uh, it, it tackled a very prominent issue in the stand-up comedy community. And uh, he, t- he talked his shit. He stood up for himself. He fired the-, the appropriate shots. And I've got a lot of respect for that. Like, he didn't hold back on that, and I respect it. There's, uh, there's some feistiness in that. I love that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to fuck Chris Rock. I'm going to... I'm going to marry Schultz Infamous. Uh, I-, I love the special. The guy's a genius, and he's given me a lot of support. And uh, he's, I, I've, I've modeled so much of what I've been building over these past couple of years off of what he's done. So nothing but respect there. And Bo Burnham is a fucking genius. Fun fact about him, and I don't know if it's changed since then, but I'm, I'm a huge horror fan. And the original house from the original Nightmare on Elm Street mm-hmm. is like five blocks from the Laugh Factory. And I've just as a tourist have walking by there, I, I, walking by that, I've walked by there so many times back to my apartment after shows and stopped by just to admire the house. And then I found out his girlfriend or fiance or wife, I don't, I don't know what the relationship is now, um, she owns that house. Really? And he filmed, this is what I was told, he filmed that special in the guest house of that wow, house. Oh, shit. That's what I heard. I, I could be wrong. I hope I'm not wrong. It's an amazing story. I just, I, I love Bo. I think he's a genius creatively and he's so he funny. Is. I just don't, al- I don't always go for what's the most artsy thing. And it was an artsy masterpiece. It's just not... The other two just have me on the floor. And that's all. That's it all. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) How many are there, dude? Every time I get through one, I'm like, we did it. Okay. One more after this. Oh, man. Well, I did fuck Whitney, and that's why she's pregnant. Um, (laughs) So I'm going to fuck Whitney. I'm going to go, oh, God damn it. Actually, no. I can't. No. Okay. I I, I retract. I retract. Not fucking Um, Whitney again. Sarah has always been so hot to me. Like, even if you see footage from like the '90s, I heard like the improv, like some of the old footage. She has always been stunning, and I've I've, I've met her so a handful of times. So just to clarify, times. When, <laughs> you, it's just you can be as graphic as you like as long as they weren't. I bet officially I, I bet I could. And if I didn't have and if I didn't have a girlfriend, I'd probably maybe I'd be more descriptive. But in the meantime, she's gorgeous. She's so funny, and she's always been very nice to me. Um, now, if I'm, I'm, all right, so I'd, I'd probably fuck Sarah Silverman. Um, I'd, uh, I'm marrying Nikki Glazer just because Whitney has a baby now, and like I don't, I don't want to be married. With with some, yeah, I don't want to yeah. be married to somebody with somebody else's kid right yeah. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, yeah. not let me build to be a stepdad. Uh, and, and Nikki's also like so <laughs> sexual that um, I feel like, I feel like uh, we would have. I don't know. I feel like she would be fun to be around. Like her, she cracks me the fuck up. I've, I've been lucky enough to do a bunch of shows with her, and she's just a good time to hang around. She's very down to earth. I guess would be the best word to use it. So I mean, she's just easy to be around. So sorry, Whitney. 
<laughs> uh, d- decline, decline, and fucking marry Jessica Lord. <laughs> nice try. That was easy. <laughs> All right, there it is. Thank you for coming on. Reminder: the special is coming out um, November fifteenth. Netflix Natural Selection. Appreciate you coming on. Sorry, Josh couldn't be here. It's um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll text him. I'll probably FaceTime to make sure he's okay. I can't, I can't thank you enough for having me in, man. Like I said, I've been a fan of what you guys have been building here. So thank you for letting me be a part of that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Of course, man. I'll see you in person sometime. Okay. Talk to you later. Later, brother.